Okay, so this is section 4.4, and section 4.4 is all about the equidistance theorem. In order to talk about the equidistance theorems, we need to know what distance means. So the distance between two objects is the length of the shortest path joining them, which leads us to this postulate. A line segment is shortest is the shortest path between two points. So if you have two points, does not matter where, those are my two points, the shortest distance between them is the segment that connects them. The definition of equidistance means it's the same distance. Equi, meaning equal, and distance, meaning distance. So equal distance away. Um, so for example, if we're talking about if two points P and Q are the same distance from X, um, X is equidistant from P and Q, okay? X is equidistant from P and Q. It's the same distance away, stressing that. So hopefully you guys pause this and you guys wrote this down in your notes. The next definition is a perpendicular bisector is exactly like what it sounds. It is both perpendicular and a bisector. Okay, so the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So if I had a segment, I'm going to call it AB, and I had a second segment, we'll call that CD. If this information is given to me right here, I could say that CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. And that's because AB is getting bisected. This is the one that's getting bisected. You can see that with the tick marks. Tick marks. Okay. Um, and it's also perpendicular. So again, a perpendicular bisector has to not only be perpendicular, which you guys can see right here, but it also has to be a bisector. So CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB because AB is the one that's getting bisected. Theorem 24. Uh, so here are the equidistance theorems. If two points are each equidistant from the endpoints of a segment. So let's start here. So let's draw the endpoints of a segment. I'll do that in pink. I'll draw the endpoints and we'll call it A and B. Okay, so here's A and B. If there are two points that are equidistant from those endpoints, so I don't know, I'll put C here. How's that? And you can see that it's equidistant from here and from here. So it's equidistant away from the endpoints. Um, let's make another one. Where should we put D? Should we put D up here? Why not? I'll put D here. And again, you can see that D is equidistant from both A and B. I'll put tick marks here. My apple pen is like dying. Come on. Okay, it's equidistant. So C is equidistant from A and B. In other words, AC is congruent to AB, sorry, to CB. Same thing, D is equidistant from A and B. In other words, AD is congruent to DB. Okay, so this is the setup. So if two points, my two points are C and D, C comma D, if two points are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, the endpoints are A and B. So C is equidistant from A and B, D is equidistant from A and B. Then those two points, if I were to connect those two points, this is magic, it happens every single time. Those two points will determine 
the perpendicular bisector of the segment. What? Look at that. If I connect C and D, and of course they go on forever. So if I connected C and D and it goes on forever. So then CD, the line, is the perpendicular bisector of that segment of AB. Isn't that crazy? Every single time it works. So that means that we know that this, didn't want that color. We know that this piece is congruent to this piece, okay? And that works every single time, okay? So again, this is how it is. We start off with a segment, okay? SE for segment. We start off with a segment. You can draw any two points in the world as long as those two points are equidistant away. So I'll call this G. And I don't know, I'll put one down here. Okay, equidistant away, M. If you connect G and M, what? It is the perpendicular bisector of that blue segment. Isn't that crazy? It happens every single time. That is the equidistance theorem. Okay. If a point is on, so I'm going to, I wish I could do this. My Apple Pen is like dying. No idea what's happening. I'm going to bring this down here. Okay. So again, you can see that GM is the perpendicular bisector of the segment SE. GM is the perpendicular bisector of SE. If a point is on that perpendicular bisector, so now that we know that GM is the perpendicular bisector, if a point is on this segment, if it's on the perpendicular bisector, then it's also equidistant away. So now, if I put any point I want, right, we're allowed to add a point, so I'm gonna add point A, if I pick point A, it automat because it's on that perpendicular bisector, it's automatically equidistant away. Okay? If I picked point H, again, because technically this extends forever, because H is on this perpendicular bisector, it's equidistant away. If I picked G, I already have a G. I picked N. Again, it is equidistant away from the endpoints of the segment. Any point that is on the perpendicular bisector, any point in the world, you guys can screenshot this. Put a point on that pink. This is the perpendicular bisector. Any point that is on the perpendicular bisector is going to be equidistant away from the endpoints of the segment, which is S E. Okay, any point. So let's work our way to a proof. What is she talking about? How are we going to use this? So let's take a look at this. This is essentially, these theorems are essentially shortcuts. So let's talk about this proof. We have A B is congruent to A D. So this piece is congruent to this piece. And that's given to us. We have BC is congruent to CD. BC is congruent to CD. We want to prove that BE is congruent to ED. Now, I'm looking at this and I see some stuff kind of overlapping. I see this B and I see this D. Look at that, this B and this D. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm also seeing that I have two points, A and C, and they are equidistant, A and C, and they are equidistant away from the endpoints. Therefore, 
okay? Once again, go back, think about that theorem that we're working with. Um, I can go through and I can say, right, that AC is the perpendicular bisector of BD. My reason is if two points which again are A and C, and C, A and C, that's an and sign. If two points are equidistant away from the endpoints of a segment, that segment is BD, then they make the perpendicular bisector of the segment, okay? They make the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Now my last step, BE is congruent to ED, obviously, because what do you notice about point E? Point E is on my special line. Point E is on this perpendicular bisector. It's on AC. So therefore, BE has to be congruent to ED. And that's because any point, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant away from endpoints of the segment. Now, if you guys are like, ah, this is crazy. I don't know what she's talking about. Could you do this another way? Absolutely. So let's say you're, this is the other option that you guys have. Starting off with the proof, you have step one given, step two given. Step three, reflexive, AC equals AC. Step four, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. So that's your fourth step. And that is by side, side, side. Okay. Once those triangles are congruent, their parts are congruent. So angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC. Because if the triangles are congruent, then all of their parts are congruent to each other. Once you have that, now you can pick out the bigger triangles right here. Okay, you already have A, D, and B, A, B. But you can say that A, E is congruent to A, E. And that's because of the reflexive property. Any segment is congruent to itself. Um, so you have the side, the angle, and the side. Therefore, you can pull out triangle. ABE is congruent to triangle ADE by side angle side. And then finally, step eight, BE is congruent to ED by CPCTC. Okay? If you don't want to continue making these very long proofs, what I just taught you is just a shortcut. Okay? The equidistance theorem. Let's try another one. Statements and reasons. So step one, angle one is congruent to angle two. Given, okay? Immediately I'm zoning in on why would they give me angle one equals angle two? Although it is now an isosceles triangle, so if angle one equals angle two, then I can say that AB is congruent to AD, and that is because if angles are congruent, then the sides opposite are congruent to each other in one triangle. Okay, so I have this congruent to that. Um, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, given. I am then going to say the same thing. CB is congruent to CD. Okay, and that is the same step as number two. 
Um, now I'm going to pause because I see that I have a segment here. And I also have these two points that are equidistant away from the endpoints of a segment. And if two points are equidistant away from the endpoints of a segment, I am going to say that AC, in other words, AE, is the perpendicular bisector of BD. If two points are equidistant from the end points of a segment, then they create the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So AE or AC is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. If, again, you don't want to use this shortcut, you are going to have to prove lots of information here. You have to prove not only are triangles congruent to each other, and then by CPCTC that um, AE bisects BD, you also have to prove then that AE is perpendicular to BD. So it ends up being about 12, I think 12 to 14 steps, or you can learn these theorems. So let's do that. Yay.